Hello, my darlings. Thank you for joining me for a drink on Get Lit with K&E. This evening, I wanted to chat with y'all about the top six most impactful reads from 2018. These are not in any particular order. They all impacted me in very different ways, so they're not really a one-to-one -one comparison. They just all left a really powerful, lasting impression for one reason or another, which I'm about to list out here. First up, we have Being Mortal by Atul Gawande. This one hit home pretty hard because my family unfortunately has a long and storied history with end-of-life care and hospice. Far more experience with both of those things than any one family really should, should have experience with. Um, so this book brought some closure to, for me because it was someone within the medical profession extremely publicly acknowledging the profound weakness that exists in the Western practice of medicine around end-of-life care and how incredibly irresponsible most of the, the practice actually is around end-of-life care. Um, in large part because these doctors are taught to treat the illness rather than treat the patient. And that model doesn't allow for responsibility when it comes to acknowledging that death exists and it's, it's going to happen. So that, that brought a lot of closure to anger for me around past experience with medicine and with hospice. Next up, we have How Democracies Die by Stephen Levitsky and Daniel Zablatt. This one is probably the most timely on the list, topical for sure. Uh, it was particularly appropriate for me because with having moved as frequently as I did when growing up, I really was just taught the Civil War over and over again in history class. Uh, so this filled in a lot of gaps that I still had lingering from global history, particularly regarding Latin America and America's role in some of those conflicts. It was also one of those books that you have to be careful what mental state you're in when you start reading it, especially when you're finishing it, because it goes through the checklist for health for a democracy and how that balance tips between illness and health for a democracy, uh, whether it's democracy by name or democracy by behavior. And unfortunately, a lot of that has to do with the powers that are already in play, that have already been voted in and that have ensured that their establishment remains, which can feel very disheartening from just your standard uh, citizen's perspective. But it also was a good reminder that we do have the power to vote. Our votes do still matter. We are still in a democracy that's healthy enough where those votes do matter. We have our problems, but they still count. And uh, so that was, that was encouraging. It also was definitely a call to arms in terms of saying, look, if you have the experience, if you have the background, go into politics. Give it a, give it a chance. And I think our, our most recent Congress is a really good example of seeing that movement take hold. So that's heartening, for sure. So this one was both lessons learned and hopeful future. Born a Crime by Trevor Noah is next on the list. The audiobook is read by Noah himself and his comedic timing is gold, so that's a great way to experience this book, this memoir. My biggest takeaway from this book was the way that even in the face of degradation and dehumanization and horror, humor can be an incredibly powerful and empowering lens to use. Humor as your primary mode of interacting with the world can make all the difference. And I read this book when I really needed to be pulled out of my own head and given a sort of 
a restart in terms of my own engagement with the world. So this book was timed beautifully, and I am so pleased to have experienced it when I did. Next on the list is Push, which is now titled Precious on the book covers because of the movie, and it's by Sapphire. And before I go any farther, this one, I am going to give a trigger warning. I am going to talk about rape and sexual assault. So if you want to skip this section, in, in the description box, you will see the time marker that you can just fast forward to that spot if you want to skip this review. So Push was impactful to me in a slightly different way than it was for a lot of people. So I acknowledge how impactful this was with full <laughs> awareness of how uneven the, dis the depiction of Precious was in the book. It had its problems, but Sapphire, in terms of her treatment of acknowledging the emotional complication and the realities that come with long-term sexual abuse, she was there to engage with those in a way that I have not encountered in another author. Rape is almost always used as an indicator that an experience was just like really bad, really bad. Um, so it becomes a, a plot device in the same way that like the dead girlfriend moves forward a, a story. Um, Sapphire didn't go there. She was brave and true enough to acknowledge that it's complicated and to go at it with a nuanced perspective and a, a sympathetic perspective that really humanizes the experience. And I know that sounds weird. I know that sounds weird. But by taking such a human approach to such a dehumanizing experience, it was actually incredibly empowering to read. And while it was triggering, as, as someone who has also suffered long-term assault, not for my family, so I can't speak to how authentic that felt emotionally, but in terms of the impact of long-term assault, it, it actually was amazing to see my experience represented rather than to see it simplified and dumbed down and presented as a plot point. It was just one of the things that this character was going through and one of the realities that she was dealing with and it handled it in such a nuanced way. And I will always be grateful to Sapphire for actually going there in a way that other people are either too afraid or I don't have another excuse for people. They're too afraid to engage with. So cheers to you, Sapphire. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now for something completely different and last on the list, I'm actually pairing two books together, The Storied Life of A.J. Fikri by Gabrielle Zevin and Maisie Dobbs by Jacqueline Winspear. I'm pairing these two together because they had a slightly similar impact. Their takeaway for me was that it's okay to not be okay as long as you're still making yourself open to the things that will help you be okay. And with 2018 being an incredibly tough year as a nation and as a state in North Carolina and both in, and also in my personal life, that was really important to have someone not be like, no, you just need to like be happy and say it's okay. It's like, no, you're not okay. And that's acceptable. You've been through trauma. It's okay to not be okay. And the, the thing that you have to actually worry about is just one foot in front of the other. And in the process of putting those feet in front of the other, you just gotta be open. And it's tough, but it's worth it. So those were really positive, positive reads for 2018. So while this was not the most uplifting of videos, I appreciate you staying for it. These all were important reads, and I would absolutely recommend them 
hands down, 100% to everybody. These are must reads, I would say, in a way, actually. All very timely or important or just valuable. So thank you for joining me, and I will see you for another episode of Get Lit with Candy. Cheers. Let me drink it all.